That was some really good music. What did you think Fantastic. of that? Fantastic. I just sat down. I was dancing. I was thoroughly entertained. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you guys will be thoroughly entertained today It's still as well. early. We'll find out. <laughs> I'm Julia Billen here, owner at Warmly Yours. And I'm Scott from Warmly Yours. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about floor heating cable and two ways to install it. It's that simple. There's two ways only, mm -hmm. uncoupling membrane or fixing strips. So we'll delve into both of those. There's multiple ways to do it. So let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it. But first, we want to make sure that we get your questions. Usually when we send out an invite, we ask people to send in questions. We get a ton of questions. This time... None. No questions. So I guess everybody either knows everything. I bet they're saving their questions to type into that little white box. All right. Love that intro. All right. Let's move on. Let's get started. So we're going to go over things a little differently this time. We've got a little outline to keep you mm -hmm. and I straight. Right. Uh, so we're going to talk about the actual product. So we'll talk about cable. We'll talk about cable, the installation membrane. We'll talk about fixing strips. And then, of course, you guys want to know the benefits. You also want to know when to use them, why to use them, and how to use them. So And always a few people are very interested in what it costs. I'm always interested yeah. in that. So, so that's the program for today. Uh, we'll get right to the heart of it. This is the STAR, the mm -hmm. TempZone cable. So these products only, we have many TempZone products, but this is cable only. And um, it's becoming very popular with installers. And, and so they're naturally curious about wh what's the best way to install it, how and when. But let's go over the cable itself just to just give a few little specifications. Well, first, Julia, I think someone may be having trouble getting audio. So oh, no. um, it looks like Charles is having trouble getting audio. Uh, can anyone else key in and let us know if they're able to hear us? Okay. Maybe that's just one of uh, his settings on his computer. But thanks for letting us know, yeah, Charles. Thank uh, you. And anybody else out there? Can you kind of chime in if you can hear us or not? I can hear fine. Okay. All right. All thank right, you, Charles. We, we hope you work that out. Um, if not, we'll be sending an email with this presentation to all of you guys. So look forward to that. All right. So let's go over the temp, temp zone cable and let's talk about um, you know the highlights of it. Why is it the star? Well, it's going to deliver the heat. That's why it's the star. If you've ever had radiant heat before, you know that's what you're after. You want that to be nice and comfortable in your bedroom or your bathroom or wherever you decide to put it. And this is the idea. This is what's going to be generating the heat. The other two, th the other things are going to be how it's installed. All right. So let's talk about those a, a little bit later. But right now, the cable comes in different lengths, so it allows you to cover different spaces at different wattages. It's very, very flexible. It lets you heat up odd, odd and strange uh, shaped areas, lets you get in there. And it's been used for decades. I yeah, mean, it's, and, it's been around forever. And I'm going to share a little because I've been around forever in this industry. And when we first started in the industry, the cable was sort of, that was old news. Uh, and everyone did the roll products where you have the cable and it's it's kind of adhered or, or to a membrane of sorts. Um, and that, that is still a very popular product. It's our, our flex roll. But the, uh, that went out of, the cable went out of fashion. That came in. And now we're seeing full circle. Cable is back in fashion, and installers are loving it. And I think part of that is the flexibility. Right, right. And what we'll be talking about today are the two ways to get it put into your floor, depending on what kind of rush you're in, what kind of cost you're looking for. Um, do you need it this? Do you need that? So that's what we're going to get into today. All right. So these are the two products that go with the cable uh, for for the installation. So we have the Prodesso membrane, um, and that is just a product that allows you to travel the cable throughout the membrane, so very quick. And then we also have the fixing strips. Um, it saves you, um, it's a little bit more time, but very inexpensive uh, to use as a means to uh, install the heating cable. Okay, and I do see we have somebody else that's mentioned that they don't have any audio, um, but I think the overwhelming uh, consensus is that the audio is going out. So if you don't hear us, we're going to send you out. Once again, we're going to send you out a link to this video and you'll be able to watch it in, in, in your entirety or in, in its entirety. So uh, don't worry about that. But let's talk about the... the and the she can't hear that, by the way. Yeah, so it's like... <laughs> Just read my lips and you'll be fine. Um, now, um, oh, what you want to do is uh, to exit out of the program and then re-enter, and that should reboot yeah. your system. And we should probably chat that uh, for those who can't can't hear. So we'll chat that out to you as well. All right. 
Let's let's move on. So, so anyway, the Perdesa membrane. If you're really really in a rush, it lets you get the ca- it get, lets you get the cable and your tile in. Sometimes you can do that in one day. Uh, the strips, in a nutshell, will save you money. They're less expensive, and um, Perdesa is really designed for tile floors, mm-hmm. whereas the cable and fixing strip can be used in different types of flooring. Excellent. So we'll get into that here in just a little bit. And then with the flexibility, I think, is the key word, uh, and that's why people love the cable. As you can see, we've got a chart here. It looks a little complex uh, for me, uh, but uh, it shows you right there the cable lengths, 30 through 432 feet, and just the different ways you can configure it in terms of spacing. So you can go anywhere from 3-inch all the way out to 5-inch spacing, which, again, depending on the application, the climate, um, your budget, um, this is a great way to kind of uh, customize it to, to get the best return on investment. And the simple way what this chart is telling us is that the closer the wires are together, the more heat you're going to get in that spot. Right. Now, you're, o- you're only allowed to get them so close. So there is going to be a limit as to how close you can get them. But also, as you get them further and further apart, mm-hmm. it gets less watts per square foot, which means less heat per square foot, which means it may not get as warm if you space them at five inches as if you do space them at three inches. And if you're in California, that's fine. If you're in Illinois, you may want to take and um, um, pay a little more attention to that. But the other thing is the further you uh, space those out, the less your electrical usage as well. So if you have some limited electrical supply, uh, you could space out further, giving the right conditions. It's only for comfort. It's in the right climate. So tremendous flexibility. Yes, and that's what's so great about this. We can design it to fit your particular situation. So that's right. what's so great about the cable is its flexibility with that. Now, as we go through the presentation, we're going to talk about membrane versus fixing strips, and we'll address flexibility uh, and applications on on, um, on each uh, kind of slide that we have here. So let's give an overview of just the membrane itself, some of the highlights. Yeah, this membrane was patented decades ago. Yeah, so it's uh, the, the original. Around, huh? Yeah, this is the original one. It's the blue stuff. And um, it's it, it's been around a long time. And if you look at this blue, you can see that there are like hockey pucks or studs mm-hmm. that are sticking up. And they are spaced so that this cable fits perfectly inside those and it holds the cable in place. Now, it allows you to lay it out, to curve it around, to turn it, to do that sort of stuff. And the studs actually are a little bit higher Mm -hmm. than the cable. So it protects it a little? Yep. So if you're walking around on the flooring, after you put the cable down, uh, the studs are kind of keeping your feet from really pushing down on that cable and compressing it. So if you've got a uh, job site with high traffic, this might be uh, a great reason why you would include uh, the the membrane at, right. as an option. Right. And the way it, the way it uncouples is if we take a look at, um, uh, in a couple of slides, we'll actually see the back of the product a little better. Mm-hmm. But the back actually works in concert with the top, or the bottom works with the top. The top is a waterproof portion with the studs, and then the bottom is a non-woven uh, material that allows the thin set to get into and hold on to the bottom of it. Excellent. Uh, as the floor moves, what we're separating, what we're doing here is this is actually separating the tile from movement in the subfloor. Nice. So as the subfloor moves, it's attached to that fleece that we're going to see, and that fleece will then displace, but the tile will still stay in the same place as the floor moves. So there's a lot of benefits to this product. Now, as it relates to electric floor heating, the main thing is just having those grooves, those channels that you can very quickly uh, weave the heating element through. But let's talk about some of the other benefits. Well, look at you. You got a whole slide and all. Yeah, how about that? All right, so talk about some of the uh, benefits. You just mentioned a little bit the uncoupling. Mm -hmm. Uh, So anything else you want to share? Well, whenever you, if you've visited with us before, if you've Mm -hmm. ever seen one of our presentations, you know that EFH stands for electric floor heat. But if you're joining us for the first time, you may go, what's EFH cable? It's just electric floor heating cable. Mm-hmm. And what this does is it is is the Perdesso does these five different things all at the same time, okay. which is what's so cool about it. So it isolates, um, it, as we talked about, it uncouples, so cracks. It uncouples mm-hmm. the, the, the subfloor from the tile. It also lets uh, vapor management is the next thing that's there. We kind of go left, right, left, right. Vapor management allows you to actually put tile over a concrete slab that isn't all the way cured yet. Hmm. So what it does, it lets the vapor uh, the vapor come out of 
that slab and recirculate it then back down into the slab. Um, but so, let, let your slabs cure, folks. Yes, yes, let it cure, but it will allow you to get uh, tile on there a little bit quicker. A little bit faster. Yep, okay. yep, so just make sure you follow the, the normal um, installation manual instructions when it comes to that. And then the next one, you know, helps to evenly uh, distribute the weight. Uh, I guess that's to prevent the cracking, is that right? Yeah. And that you well, mentioned earlier? Well, the crack isolation, if you take a look at the crack isolation, uh, especially in, we did a job in your basement mm -hmm. where there was a crack in the concrete slab. Yeah, and, existing. Yeah, an existing crack. And what that does is it lets you get over that and, and, and take away that crack from being a problem. So it doesn't telegraph its way into the tile. Got it. Well, what happens is the crack isolation works laterally, but you will have trouble no matter what product you get if your slab decides to do this. Yeah. So if it does this, you'll see crack isolation. That means in a lateral motion. Okay. So it can, it allow the, the subfloor to move sideways and hold the top in place. But when it does this, no, no system will allow that to not transfer its way to the tile. And, and the load distribution, somewhat related as well, I would assume. Yeah, because what you're doing is when you're putting the thin set in between those little hockey pucks, yeah. is it's actually making pillars that are supporting the weight of the tile. So first of all, you have the tile that's supporting some weight. Mm -hmm. Then you have these individual pillars all over your floor that that tile is pushing down on, and it's not pushing down on the wire. Okay, excellent. And you mentioned the waterproof. You know, yeah, right? that's what's so great is the top is waterproof. It's made of polypropylene. So you don't have to worry about water, you know, getting through it. It's just where you have two pieces next to each other that you may have some water migration. And we will talk to you about that too. Mm -hmm. But Perdesso has achieved a heavy rating with the Robinson test, yeah. which is a, a standard test in the industry. Yeah. So that's what you're always going to want to, to look for. And it's also passed the crack, the crack isolation test. So it's a very, very good product. I believe it's the only product that's passed that crack isolation test. Excellent. All right, so it sounds great. Sounds like a great product. So when wouldn't I use this, right? Right, right. Well, you know, you it'd be nice to have a snorkel every time you w went into the pool, but you don't need a snorkel or, or a, um, a, an oxygen tank. So you don't necessarily need this for every single job. It's okay. kind of the same idea. And what I love about this is not the big red circle with an X to it. I love looking at the back of this. Oh, you of wanted all. to mention that, yeah, right? Yeah, because if we look at the back there, you can see where it says Perdesso. That's actually um, the woven backing, and okay. that, that woven backing actually gets, uh, you use thin set to attach this to the subfloor. Yeah. That's what gives it the grab from the underneath. And we're going to go over that more later. Mm -hmm. We've got detailed slides on that. But let's get back to why wouldn't I use this on every job? If your floor is very solid, it's a small span, and it passes all the deflection tests, there's no reason that you have to buy this extra membrane. Okay. It's really just extra money to achieve really nothing extra. Um, smaller rooms, um, smaller jobs, usually are well supported. And I think our average job is about 45 square foot. So would right. you use that in that small of an area? It depends on the condition of the floor. If okay. the floor is, is got wide joists underneath it, as opposed to narrow joists. Mm -hmm. uh, what was so um, interesting is we did a job in this house not too far from here. And one bathroom had 11 inch on center mm -hmm. joists under it, right. was solid as a rock. The other one was uh, 16 or was 19 inch on center. Wow. And that was like almost like a trampoline. So some of those floors, if you have too much deflection, this will not help. But sometimes this will eliminate you uh, with certain products that you're not natural stone, but with certain tiles, you can actually eliminate that second layer of plywood and use this in, 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 um, in a substitute right. type for that. So. If you have a well-supported floor, you probably don't need this. Okay, and that's from a technical aspect, but mm -hmm. also from a budgeting aspect. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need this product at all. Right, and you really shouldn't use it if you're using small mosaic tiles. Okay. Its limit is two inch by two inch. So mm -hmm. anything smaller than that, you really wouldn't want to do this. You'd want to use cable, cover with self-leveling, and then put the mosaic down. What there. about the two inch, two inch that's on that mesh backing? Could you use that? That um, those are kind of dicey too because mm -hmm. they they do meet. You know those two th those those mesh mm -hmm. squares actually meet up to each other. Right. So that's what you have to watch out for. Okay. So it's always the best idea to stay away from the two by two uh, with this particular product. So that's when you would use it and when you wouldn't use it. Type in your questions and let us know if you have like specific applications that you're thinking about using this product for, and we'll we'll try and get those answered. Mm -hmm. All right. And the thing uh, we talk about every, every once in a while, you'll hear deflection tests. 
um, that's how you can test to see how much deflection you have in your floor mm -hmm. and whether it can be used to, to be tiled the way it is or if it needs to have a, um, another layer of plywood put down or some right. reinforcement put under it. You'll see L360, you'll see L720. L360 is for um, most tiles. You're just throwing out those numbers. And L720 is for uh, stone. Nice. Stone products and tile products are two different things. They expand and contract different ways. Yeah. So if you have a stone floor, if you're interested in putting natural stone in, you really need to do your deflection test and make sure before you even use this or the cables by themselves. Sounds like you could be an installer at this uh, point. Well, you, I just read. Sometimes <laughs> reading, is, reading is fundamental. So let's take a look at the benefits of the fixing strips. Yeah, I love the fixing strips. Yeah, they're very low tech yeah they work like a charm they do and they make it very visually easy to, to decide how wide the cables are spaced apart yeah so if you take a look there at the picture at the bottom you'll see the the strip there right there at yep. the bottom there mm -hmm. and that strip has been held in what you can hold it in depending what the subfloor is you can use nails you can use screws you can tape. use tape you can use um staples and you just do it every couple of inches and those will be nice and sturdy for you. Mm -hmm. They only have to be strong for a little while to hold the cable in place. Once it's covered with thin set, its job is done. Yeah. So um, what's so great about these is this will allow you to cover the product with self-leveling. Okay. And that will allow you to put products like LVT over the top. It'll allow you to put carpeting over the top if you want. It kind of gives you a blank slate with a flat floor that'll allow you to put whatever you decide to put on there. So if you're thinking, hey, you know what, I think I might put some tile down, but maybe um, in a couple of years, we might wanna put some carpet or we might wanna put some LVT. Right. What you would do is you take this product, cover it self-leveling, then you have your blank canvas. And I love that because uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you know, on average, people change their flooring every, I think seven years is the average. So the floor heating has a very long life. It's actually been tested out to 75 years. Um, and this would allow you to, as trends uh, change or you change, um, you can change your flooring without having to be worried about um, hitting the heating element. You have a little worry, but less worry if you cover it with self-leveling. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of self-leveling, we're getting a question about um, large uh, format porcelain tiles, you know, three by 10. What um, what uh, technique do you recommend uh, for installing that? Would it would it, would it matter if it was cable, flex roll, or custom mat um, based on using large format porcelain tile? Well, first of all, it depends on where you go, but large formats usually 13, uh, 14 inches and longer on one side. So even though seven by ten seems kind of big, it's not really that big. Or three by ten, what is that number? Is that a three or a seven? It's a three, three by ten. Mm -hmm. Three by ten. That's not really long, large format. Mm -hmm. uh, large format because that would that would make every twelve by twelve tile a large format tile, mm -hmm. and, and that's not it. You go by the longest dimension that, of one did, side. I believe that's three feet by ten feet. Oh, three feet by ten feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's by footage. Then you would definitely need to uh, use. Um, Prodesso can be used with that. Mm -hmm. You'd probably want to use unmodified thin set for that, mm -hmm. and you would definitely want to use large format tile thin set for mm -hmm. that because there's special thin set mixed a certain way for very large format tiles like that. And um, Perdesso, can, you can use some um, non-modified and you can use most of the time non-modified. Sometimes you can use actually modified thin set over Perdesso, but for large format tiles like this, you would definitely need unmodified uh, thin set. Uh, that's in the installation manual. It's written right down there. So if you're interested in that, we could send you the information uh, and also yeah. the install manual. Just just email us and we'll, we'll give you that information at the end. Okay. Um, the other question that we have, and it's a great question, does it have to be in self-leveling or thin set? Could it be uh, in a mud bed? Or Well, uh, I, I can tell you, Perdesso, when it was tested and all of, its, all of its testing results done by the different testing laboratories were all done with unmodified above it. Right. Okay, so that's where all the testing is. Now there are some thin set companies like Custom, Mapay, uh, amongst other big players in the thin set community who have said that you can use modified thin set and they will give you a warranty for modified thin set over Perdesso. Mm -hmm. So once again, if you decide to do that with modified thin set, then the warranty for that installation type moves to the thin set manufacturer. But it would not be a problem for the cable strips. Uh, no. 
Yeah, so cable with fixing strips would be a, a great solution for that. I guess the only thing I would ask is how how deep would you bury the, the yeah. heating element? Because you don't really want it deeper than an inch to an inch, inch. And a half. yeah. So that's what you want to do. Um, if, if we talked about mud beds, mud beds are kind of like old school, and mud beds tend to get but real very thick. effective. Very effective, but they tend to get thick. Yeah. Well, if your wire, if you want your wire an inch to an inch and a half, that's where ThinSet came from. Thin bed application, right? And that's what's so good about ThinSet is you can get that cable nice and close to your flooring surface. And that's what's so great about this is that you're not going through an inch or two inches of mud bed. You're actually doing a thin ins installation. And that's where the whole impetus for ThinSet came from. Yeah, excellent. So benefits of flexing of the, the fixing strips, tremendous flexibility, um, changing the spacing, um, can use that self-leveling. So, um, I mean, I, I, and it's, you know, it costs less, so. Yeah, one thing we didn't mention about on these strips, each yep. one of those little um, indentations or those little pucks there, mm -hmm. those are an inch apart. Right. And the Perdesso studs are an inch and a quarter apart. Yeah, so a lot more flex. You, you, with the, with pro, with the Prodesso membrane, I think you only really have two um, spacing spacing three degrees it, yeah. Yeah, available. Right. But with the fixing strip, you know, you really can go from three to five, even maybe six inches, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the application. Um, so, what do you need uh, for best uh, for on a slab? Well, if you're, if you're heating a floor over a slab, the first thing you want to do yeah. is you want to get serosorb down over the slab. Yes, because excellent. you don't want these wires directly resting on the concrete. Yeah, because it, it definitely will take the, the heat and it just sucks it in. Yep. So um, if, you, if you don't put down some type of insulator, um, it, we, we really um, let people know that you'll basically just have like a neutral floor you won't really be able to get that heat in colder climates, maybe in warmer climates, you'll be okay. But in a colder climate, you're going to need serosorb or some other like cork uh, to insulate from the slab. It's always recommended. As a matter of fact, we were the first company that really started to raise awareness for the fact that you, you know, you really do get that heat sucked away uh, when, when it's directly on the slab. Yeah, you, you, you're going to have to ask yourself or ask your customers, do you want your floor to feel warm or do you just want it to not be cold? Exactly. That's what it really comes down to. And there's really nothing more frustrating than going to all the trouble putting in a nice floor that's heated and then when it's 12 degrees outside, your floor is 74. Yeah, because I mean, once you doesn't feel warm, and once you feel, once your foot so, sort of touches a warm floor, you never want to touch a cold floor again. Trust right. me. So, all right. Thanks for the question. Uh, when not to use fixing strips? I mean, again, sounds like a great product, but there are some times when it's just not right for the project. Yeah, if you need that uncoupling then you definitely don't want to be using these strips. Okay. Um, when you want to do a waterproof installation, say you want to do a curbless shower, you mm -hmm. want to do a mudroom, you want to do a waterproof mudroom. So waterproofing becomes a big deal. Yeah. And Membrane is better. Exactly, because it's built into the other product. That's one of its main, main things. Mm -hmm. Also, when you're doing fixing strips, uh, most of the time, uh, unless you're very, very experienced, we suggest you take the fixing strips, put the cables down between them, cover them with self-leveling. Mm -hmm. And usually that means you're going to come back the next day to do your tiling okay, or to do your floor installation. So it's a two-day job yeah. with the fixing strips. And unless you've, you're a veteran, you've been doing this for the last, you know, whatever years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So if you're in a real hurry, that's when you want to do the Perdesso because you can attach it to the subfloor and then put the cable in it and then start tiling right over the top of it. All right. All right, so now let's go over the, we said we would do some detail on how to install each of these products. So let's go into Prodesso. I love this, this, this sandwich, if you will. Talk me through top to bottom, if, if that works for you. Well, whenever we um, interface with a customer, we always want to know what the subfloor is. Yep. And we always, know what, we always want to know what the final flooring is going to be. Mm -hmm. Because that's going to tell you what the ingredients of your sandwich are going to be. Mm -hmm. So we need to know if the subfloor is wood, if it's a concrete slab, obviously we talked about why slab's so important. A uh, slab acts completely different than a wooden subfloor does. So we need to know that because we're also going to tell you what type of mortar that you're going to need to put between the subfloor and the Perdesso. Now, and our installation manual fully outlines that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what we would do here is where you see latex modified uh, cement mortar there under between the subfloor and the Perdesso, that may be 
modified or it may not be modified at all. It depends on what your subfloor is. And you talked about that a little yeah. earlier So as let well. us know what that is and we'll tell you what type of mortar goes in there. Rely on us. We're the experts. Well, he is anyway. So, so then we have the Prodesso membrane. We have the cable that's fitted into there. You mm -hmm. can see the Tempstone cable. Then the thin set mortar above. Once again, the instruction manual will tell you what type of flooring you're going to use, what you need to put between the flooring and the subfloor. Right. So that's where the instructions, I know, we, I don't want to read the instructions, but really it's pretty important because we know that most people just take the instructions and throw them away. We know. Yeah. All right, so that's the cross section. Now let's talk about uh, installing the Prodesso membrane. One of the things that you have to know, folks, is when you choose the membrane as, a, uh, as the solution, the membrane actually goes on the entire floor, whereas the heating element is just in the footprint of the room. It doesn't go under the, the vanities, the, the tub, the shower, just in the footprint. So um, on the floor plans, we're going to want to know um, every dimension for the uh, installation membrane and all the fixtures so that we can accurately uh, get the cable product where it needs to be in front of those fixtures. Right. And if you were looking to do a waterproof installation, which this one particularly is, mm -hmm. you need to let us know. Because otherwise, we won't make it waterproof because if you don't tell us to make it waterproof, we want to save you as much money as we can. Sure. And we'll eliminate the items that make it fully waterproof. But if you say, hey, I'm doing a, um, a curbless shower. I want my entire bathroom to be waterproof. Mm -hmm. Then we will send you the accessories you're going to need. And we're going to talk about those in a couple of minutes. But right here, what we're looking at is this is a, a plan that we do just to show you how to install the membrane. So right. uh, we really want to make sure that you guys get it right. What is it? Measure, measure twice, cut once. There you go. Uh, and so we're showing you exactly where the uh, panels would be laid, if you will, mm -hmm. or sheets, I think we call them. Um, and then um, from there, uh, we also just give you a few little tips on how to align them properly. They have to really butt up. They can't be uh, off, off kilter. Right. It won't let the cable go through. Right. And then, so we give you a plan just for that. And then you'll, you'll also see that we give you a second plan. We're going to go to that next for the actual cable uh, over that protest. So. One thing I want to talk about before we leave, it, it, you see the ones in circles there. Mm -hmm. This particular bathroom was done with two rolls of Prodesso. Okay. So roll number one was cut into these size panels, and then they fit together like that, like a jigsaw. Nice. Number two, there are no cuts. There are no seams because we want it to be a continuous pan for the shower so that it's made of its own roll number two and that's why this is a waterproofing yeah. uh okay and then you can see the inside corners the outside corners that are labeled here mm -hmm. those are actually preformed corners that allow you to get the waterproofing up onto the wall to allows you to make it like a bowl yeah it so keeps the water inside a little plug for our engineering team. Let us design it for you. Let us know you want to use that insulation membrane, and we'll take care of all of that. Let us know you want waterproofing. We'll show you exactly where those corners need to go um, and provide you exactly the right amount of material. Right. What I want to point out before we leave this slide in the upper right-hand corner. That's the second time you say that. I know, but there's so much important <laughs> stuff on here. Is if you look, there's a dotted line, a rectangular box with I dotted see that. lines. Mm -hmm. That's where a, um, a vanity is that's up on legs. So okay. a vanity that's uh, either attached to the wall Floating. or on legs yeah. can actually have heat under it. Yes. Okay. Um, if you have a vanity that's got a boxed bottom, like 90% of them still do, yeah. you don't heat under that. Nothing with a base you heat right. under. Okay. So that's installing the membrane itself. Now you mm -hmm. still have to do the cable. And again, you know, let us do the work for you. We have an engineering team. We, we turn these things around in 24 hours. Um, and uh, here we're showing you exactly where to start, where to end. There are two cables here. You can tell the one, the two. We even color code them to make it a little bit more obvious. Uh, we have a question here. Just want to confirm that you are stating that the heating cable may be placed outside a curbless shower. Um, yeah, the he heating cable outside the a curbless shower? Yes. the, the And heat, inside. And inside. The heating element is um, wet listed, wet right. location listed. So um, you can use uh, all of our temp zone products uh, in uh, wet locations. So yes, in the shower, outside of the shower, both are possible and both are done. And you always check with your local code official just to make sure because some local codes are different than the National Electric Code. Yeah, that's and true. If, if you look here, there's a couple things I want to point out. And 
one are those big red dots. Mm -hmm. Those big red dots on the plan actually show the halfway point of where the wire is. And that happens to co uh, uh, coincide with a white piece of marking that's on the cable itself. When you're unrolling the spool, you'll see, oh, there's a white dot. Mm -hmm. That white dot is the halfway mark of your cable. Yeah. Then if you look every foot on the cable, it says how many feet are left. So if you take this like this and go, here's the white dot. Oh, and here's one, you know, 32 feet, 31 feet, 30 feet. It lets you know how much is left. So what you do is you take that white dot on your cable and you see how you're doing with that red dot on the drawing. Okay. And the other thing I think that this is really great for is, is you can use this either for yourself or for your clients to understand exactly where they want heat. One of the questions that we got for the curbless shower was, well, how far away from the curbless shower should I um, start with the heating element? And frankly, what I do, um, and I've said this before in past webinars, is I actually do a walkthrough uh, in my bathroom, and I decide, based on where my feet are hitting the floor, where I want the heating element to be. And, and based on the fact that it's wet uh, uh, listed, um, wet location listed, you can make that decision really based on your, your preference, your comfort. Yeah, the one thing you, we always suggest is that you put a separate cable in the shower. And Not necessary, but he likes that. I like that because if you decide, hey, you know what, we've had it like this, and the shower, we want it to be a little bit warmer, but we don't want the rest of the room to be that warm. Yeah. Well, you can heat up the shower, its own temperature, higher, it's lower, true. or whatever. So you can get that second roll in there. If you don't do that, you have no choice. I know. And uh, so that's always a good thing to do. And uh, also, when you're doing this curbless shower, you can see the cables are right, right close to each other. They're three yep. inches apart from cable number one to cable number two. What the installer had to do is the installer, instead of drilling into the floor to making a support for the glass as it opens and closes, you mm -hmm. know, to, to put a door on there, uh, what they actually had to do is they had to attach it to the walls. Right. That because makes sense. Because that way you can keep the door opening and closing. You're not going into a door stop into the floor or anything like that. So that threshold may become important in, in your design. And just let us know if there is a threshold and we'll design around it. Or just let the glass people know that you have cable right there and please do please hang it from the wall, there which is go. exactly what we did with this plan. Okay. That way we didn't have a cold spot between the shower and the main part of the room. All right. So we, we provide the plan for the Prodesso. We provide the plan for the cable. And let's move on. All right, so this is the technical stuff. You're going to want to talk about, you know, how this gets installed. This, again, we're talking about a water, we're showing waterproofing just because we want to show, like, all the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. So talk me through what I'm seeing here because it's a lot of white. It's a lot of white, but it's a lot of blue, and I see some cool Merlot color in there, too. Yeah. Um, what we have here is a, it's like a kind of a multi-stage picture. You've got the Prodesso on the right side that's been laid out. Yep. You then put the cable down in the Prodesso, and at that point, you then waterproof. You can't waterproof it ahead of time, and you can't waterproof it before you put the cable down. You have to get the cable laid down into the grooves, and then you put the Pro Band, which is that white band there. That's going over one of the seams that was shown on the drawing. And then you can see then in the background, you can see where we've... We've got the seam that's covered the two pieces next to each other, yep. but we've also covered the seam where it goes from the wall to the floor. This now, one. now, if we didn't have a, a waterproofing application, we would just eliminate those, yes. correct? Yep. So th those are optional only if you're waterproofing. And and back to, to, to having the heating element in the shower, one of the questions that we have is, and I already know the answer because I know Scott, uh, but should that be on its separate um, thermostat? As we just said before, yes, if you want them to be do different uh, temperatures. Yeah. And the reason why I bring that up is because usually in a shower, you've got a lot of buildup of material. That's true. Because you've got to build up the edges to screed down into the drain. And the part of the floor, you want it to be as thin as possible. I have on slide number 16. All right. So we had a couple of questions that came in. Uh, one was related to, well, there may be some justifications why you need a sliding glass door for uh, a shower. And by all means, you know, uh, go with 
go with the appropriate application. You, you know, there is, you can put the heating element insides on a separate uh, cable and outside as well. So there's a lot of flexibility with how to do um, shower uh, mm -hmm. installs. And then the other thing that uh, question about um, showers was, you know, what if we ha need uh, to do it on a pitch and there's a fiberglass um, base involved? What, you want to, you always want to get, the, keep the wire as close to the surface as possible. Mm -hmm. So, especially with um, the pre-manufactured pans, um, fiberglass pans, any other type of pan, you want to be on top of that. Okay. Because that is going to be the water. The, the cable can be exposed. Can be on that layer. It doesn't need to be below a waterproof membrane because it's wet location listed. Okay. So always try to keep the wire as close to the walking surface as possible. Good. I love that tip. All right. Let's move on. Oops. I have to do it this way. <laughs> Use your magic, and there we go. You love this one. I love this one. I love this because I took the picture. All right, so talk about it. Um, what I love about this picture is that we can see the Perdesso membrane in the lower right-hand corner. Okay, yeah, That I means that. the entire floor, the entire surface has not been covered with thin set yet. Which is different than the fixing strips. Right. What we're doing is we're doing small areas at a time. Mm -hmm. which if you're going to be, you know, if you go to, okay, well, it's four o'clock, I've got time to do one more section, then I have to go for the day. That way you come back and you come back to a nice blue floor that you're going to be tiling over again. So what you do is you want to make sure that you only put thin set over the Perdesa where you're going to get to. You want to make sure it doesn't skin over. You want to make sure it stays, it's a uh, proper hydration, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we're showing this here. We covered a small area. We put tile over that area, and then we use mechanical leveling system to get those tiles nice and flat. Yeah, you love that system. Yeah, and it looks great. And what, uh, we, you know, I looked at this bathroom later after this, and the floor was just like a mirror. Mm -hmm. It was completely flat. And you'll get that result. We call it lippage. Um, and you'll practically eliminate all of your lippage if you use this leveling system. Nice. So it's really, really great. But the, the key the, the the key here is if you're going to do, it allows you to do small sections at a time. Nice. And you're in and out in a day. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Depending on the size of the job. Right. All right. So that's the overview of how to install the membrane. Um, hopefully you got a good feel for that. If not, keep the questions coming. Next, we're going to talk about how to install the uh, fixing strips. Yeah, the fixing strips. You know what I love about this picture is it shows those little holes in the center of those loops. Mm -hmm. That's where you put your screw or your nail. That way it keeps the nail away from the wire. So right in that center. Yeah, right in that center hole. It's kind of like everything points to that hole. That's where you want to put your anchor to hold them in place. Nice. So let's take a look at We got at the, the sandwich again. This yep. looks a lot mm -hmm. more complicated. Really, it's it's depends on how you look at it. It really is simple. <laughs> and all that is, is you're starting with your subfloor. You then have your fixing strips. You attach them into the floor okay. uh, perpendicular to where you want the cable to run. So if you want the cable to run this way, then your strips have to go this way to allow you to loop back and forth to get that cable going this way. So when you're doing a fixing strip, you always need that tape? Uh, we suggest it because especially with self-leveling, if you're going to thin set over it, you may not need it if you get the wire taut enough, mm -hmm. but if the problem with self-leveling is it's very, very dense. Right. And just about anything in the world will float in self-leveling, including the cable. So if you're doing a long span of cable, 10 feet, 12 feet, that cable will float to the top unless you use the masking tape every two or three feet to hold it down. And that way it keeps the wire on the subfloor where it needs to be so it doesn't float to the top. Nice. So you've got subfloor, you're, you're adhering the fixing strips in, in either with tape, nails, staples, screws. Um, you're then stringing the heating element, um, you know, because the fixing strips are on both sides of the room. Mm -hmm. So you're stringing, you're stringing the, the cable and then you're putting tape down, uh, you know, every two or three feet, two or three feet, uh, depending just to make sure that that cable stays down. I guess you don't want to use too much ca uh, tape there because no, the one inch wide tape is perfect. It, yeah. it, remember the tape only has to be strong enough for a few minutes. Okay. Then its job is done. Okay. It's the cable is going to be held in place with the self-leveling cement. So what I want you to do is just imagine that top layer not being there where it says tile LVT. Right. Just imagine that's not there. Once you're done with this operation, 
you're going to have an entire room covered with self-leveling cement. Nice it's going and to be smooth. Completely smooth, completely flat. And now you can put down whatever you want. Whatever you want on top of it. Okay, brilliant. Love that. All right, so um, let's talk about um, your. You know, we've we've already got kind of gone over it a little bit, but let's break down this slide and talk about. You'd like to talk about perpendicular to the 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 fixing strips are per perpendicular to the cable, and you know one of the questions that I've had is can can I do a cable with fixing strips in different directions? Mm -hmm. How would that work? You just need to change the direction of your strips if you need to go off into a different direction into another room, mm -hmm. you just do a loop here and then do a loop around and then it's very simple. I mean, our drawings will show you exactly how to do it. Okay. So if that's, if that's what you want to do, it's very easy to do. You just put up, um, instead of running them this way, you would run them this way and then run the cable back and forth this direction. Okay. And again, that comes down to the flexibility of, of the cable. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's looped. Um, uh, you know, we've talked about there's different loops that you can do. You know, the standard is about three inch, but you can go all the way out to five, six inches, depending on the application, and we'll work that through with you. Mm -hmm. Anything else we should add? No, I think that's, that's about it. it. But the, remember, we, the main thing is the closer the cable is to each other, yep. the warmer it's going to get. Yep. The further apart it is, the cooler it's going to get. And if you get them too far apart, you may actually step warm, cold, yeah, warm. Yeah, we call that striping, yes. not a good thing. Yeah, so you go six, seven, eight inches apart. You have to remember... The lateral give of the of the warmth is about an inch and a half right. from each side of the cable. So if you space the cables three inches apart, they overlap perfectly and give you a nice even heat. Mm -hmm. If you start pulling them out further, you may not notice it until you get out to five inches, six inches, and then you may notice, oh, that step is warmer than this one. Yeah, and the other thing I, I, I sometimes think about in, in these designs is where's, where's my heat loss? Mm -hmm. So if I'm uh, maybe near a window or a door, I might put the heating, the heating element, the cable, a little closer in that area than if I'm in the middle of the floor. Yeah, so you do three inches by the, by the walls yep. and then do four inches across the middle of the floor. Yeah, and it's smart design and it's smart on the budget. Yeah. So it's a good idea because I had it. Yeah. All right. So this is self-leveling um, cement. Um, you you kind of just wanted to give a visual of what it looked like with the self-leveling coming out over the floor. That's a subfloor, although it looks like a really nice finished floor to me. But that's actually a subfloor. You can see the heating element. You can actually see where they spaced uh, the tape. Uh, and now they're, they're just floating in the self-leveling. Yeah, and that's going to keep us from having that, that cable float to the top. So um, once again, just the bullet points on this, just to make sure that we cover them is we're going to have a nice flat surface when this self-leveling is in. The masking tape is there to hold the cable down so it doesn't float to the top. When you're ready to start putting your flooring on, you want to make sure that you check the moisture levels in the self-leveling to make sure it's dried out enough, especially if you're putting hardwood or nailed down or uh, glue down or anything like that. Make sure that the, the moisture level is acceptable and your wood flooring guy will have a little tester that he sticks in there to see what your moisture level is. And um, floating floors can be directly installed right on top. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure when you're putting that floating surface on the top, if that's what you're going to do, make sure you choose something that has a lower R value. Okay. You want to stay with something with an R value Under around a one. one or, or lower? Yeah. You don't want to put a really thick carpet or something with a rubber pad on the back mm -hmm. that can trap the heat. Um, so you're kind of like it's counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. You put heat here and then you put something over the top that blocks it. So that's what you want to look at. So when you're picking your flooring on the top, look at the R value, get something with a low R value. Cool, great tip. And then one of our questions, um, Scott, is related to uh, when you're adhering the fixing strips. We, we've, you know, and we've done that on, on concrete and we've used concrete screws to do that. Uh, we've done that on plywood and there you can just nail it um, quite easily. But what about uh, backer board? Well, backer board, that's, that's something that See, we know that, that job sites are never spick and span. Mm. There's dust everywhere. So you may have to use some construction adhesive to hold it down. But mm -hmm. once again, the adhesive won't stick to the backer board if it's dusty. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be, and I know the, the last thing you want to do is, is carry a broom to the job site and start cleaning up everything like that and making it, it doesn't have to be a dust-free room, but it also can't be covered in layers of sand and dust and dirt because there's nothing to adhere to then. 
So I put down my backer board, right? Mm -hmm. And I've got my fixing strip. What's the preferred way to adhere that to a backer board? Would we nail that in? You could. Uh, I think most people would probably use screws because that's what people mm -hmm. use to put the backer board okay. um, into the subfloor. So you could actually that makes just sense. you could just use one of your, a couple of your spare screws to to get that in there. And if you use longer ones, you can actually get through the backer board down into the subfloor. Smart tip. All right. Thanks for the question. All right, so the bottom line, we also like to talk about, well, what's the, the cost difference? So uh, we brought up a 50-foot cable. Um, so, and you can see, based on different spacings, we only give you two options here, 3-inch uh, uh, and 3.75-inch. Um, but they cover you know, approximately 12 to 16 square feet. And that, the cost of that cable is $155, very affordable. And then you have to look at the cost of your installation method. So if you want to use the Prodesso membrane, you can see that that adds an additional um, $50 uh, to that project. Not bad. Uh, so that brings the uh, MSRP up to 205 Fixing strips uh, only adds about $6 to your cost, so it only brings it up to $161. So we're, when we're talking about budget, um, you can see that the fixing strips are really a great way to go, uh, unless you have a problematic floor or you're doing uh, waterproofing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, what you're going to be putting in and the way you're going to put it in is going to pretty much predicate what you're going to choose. Mm -hmm. um, if it comes down to you don't need waterproofing and it becomes apples to apples, then really what you can do is you can go at a lower cost of 161 using the cable fixing strips. Unless you're in a really big hurry and you have to get the job done today, then it would behoove you to spend the extra $44. Yeah, not so bad, eh? And put that in. So, I mean, it's just going to come up to what the flooring is that you're going to be putting in, mm -hmm. how fast you want to put it in, does it have to be waterproof or not? Sometimes it's not just based on price. But right. if you can choose price versus price, then you can see that there is a difference. Yeah, and the self-leveling, I think, is a factor as well. Do you want to have that uh, mechanical almost uh, protection of the self-leveling there uh, in case you want to change uh, your flooring type? So that's another consideration as well. So that's, um, I think that's the end of the story, folks. If you have more questions, um, we're going to be with you for another moment or two. Um, let's talk about uh, what's coming up. So we do this every month, the second Thursday of every month. And next, we're going to be talking about installation tips for heated wood floors. Um, Scott and I are both uh, on a board where we're setting standards with the Wood Flooring Association for uh, electric floor heating. Um, so we've got we've gained a lot of information um, about heated wood floors, and we want to share all that with you um, next month. So please get come back. We promise we'll fix this audio stuff and, and join us for that webinar. Uh, the other thing is we always like to let you know um, what's happening with our sales. Uh, we do have a question. How does the cable uh, warming compare to uh, the Tempzone heating rolls in price? Uh, I think the cable is slightly less expensive mm -hmm. than the rolls. So the cable is the most uh, budget friendly when you're using fixing strips. Uh, with flex rolls, um, uh, if you're using the membrane and cable, that could become more expensive than the flex roll. Yeah, and the thing is with flex rolls, they really come in handy when you're doing large areas. Yeah, it's fast. It lets, you, it lets you cover large amounts of square footage. Mm -hmm. Just very, roll very quickly. it out. Roll it out, cut it, turn it, roll it back and forth. So yeah, it, it, once again, it comes down to, <clears throat> is, is that little bit of an extra price worth saving you a lot of time? Yeah. And then our monthly promotion is on LED mirrors. We continue to expand our product lines. A lot of these floor heating uh, systems go in bathrooms. And so we continue to bring bathroom products your way. And just to showcase that, there is a promo going on. So if you can take advantage of that, cool. If not, look for our monthly promotion. We do one every month. All right. And then other than that, Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Uh, we do love when you guys give constructive feedback. We do listen. Um, I read everyone, and I take them personally. No, I don't, but I do read everyone. Uh, and tell us what you want to learn about. What do you want to know about? What expertise do you want him to share with you? And we'll bring it, OK? Challenge us. All right, and other than that, if we don't have any more questions, you can contact me directly, jbillin at warmlyyours.com. The buck does stop here. 
I do this stuff 24-7. I love my job. Mm-hmm. Do you and love you your can, job? Absolutely. All right. And so um, t- uh, Scott's actually here 24-7. He's part of our 24 leads, our 24-7 tech team. So you can get us 24-7. And check out our social media if you guys are into that after everything that uh, has been going on with Facebook. And uh, But, yeah, warmleaders.com, we're there um, for you guys. So Let us know. Let us know. And then until next time, stay warm and be radiant. Thank you, guys. We love you.